the Wistow Cemetery, it's very, very small, but all of the graves are just totally jam-packed with the tackiest, most kitschy decorations you could ever imagine. So over the top. They're nothing like what you typically see. I don't know why, but the Wistow Cemetery made me so sad, and I felt so emotional when I was there. It was a very strange experience because the cemetery itself, it's in the middle of nowhere. I mean, you really get the sense that there's nothing for miles. It's so quiet. I found this bouquet of fake yellow flowers that had religious imagery imprinted on them. There was another set of fake red flowers where the fabric of the fake flower had all of these words on it, believe, joy, dream, live. There were so many knickknacks that I discovered for the second time, but I think the strangest one was this pole that had these three yellow see-through resin trucks. The layout of the cemetery, it's really random. There are some areas that are these big, broad, open spaces. And you have these little graves that are scattered about. But then there were definitely specific areas that almost felt like they were set aside for the larger, more dramatic displays. And these were the displays that were very flashy, really glamorous. They had super saturated, bright colors, whereas the smaller graves were so hard to notice because a lot of them were either very much faded in terms of the decorations or the decorations were fairly monochromatic. I thought that the very small, humble graves were just so beautiful. They're small. You could easily walk past one and not even notice it. They really did not call a lot of attention to themselves. And also just the height of these graves was so shallow whereas the larger graves were actually very tall. They had the movement from the pinwheels. You couldn't not notice them, but these smaller ones really felt like a little whisper within the cemetery. I love monochromatic scenes. I'm not somebody who is really naturally gravitating towards hyper-saturated colors. And so I looked at those small graves and I knew I wanted to paint one of them. And the one that I found, I thought, had a wonderful color scheme because most of it was pretty gray and monochromatic, but there's this burst of this pink in the flower petals that seemed to really leap out at you in a way that the other areas did not. And I think pink is a hard color to use in painting. I think, unfortunately, pink has a lot of stereotypical associations. It's a color that has a lot of baggage. And people think about bubblegum and silly princess dresses and things like that. And yet here was that same bright bubblegum pink, but in a scenario where it actually felt very somber. And I really loved that idea that a color could transform itself so dramatically against what we typically see. I tried to really emphasize the difference between the brightness of the flower petals against the rest of the scene, which was quite gray. One of the ways I did that was I decided to do the vast majority of the marker was very much reserved for the flower petals. And so there would be this color change in terms of saturation, but there would also be this shift of texture that I was hoping would really show the difference between those two areas. I think a lot of people, they don't tend to like the subtle muted colors. I mean, let's face it, a lot of times it looks like booger green or like puke brown. It's not pretty colors. Those muted colors are so important because they're supporting players in that they make the bright, pretty colors look even more bright and pretty. And that was what I was thinking. All of those grays and subtle shifts of browns and greens would be there to really boost the saturation of those pink flower petals. There are so many pinwheels in that cemetery, and there's one that's very heavy and metal, and it made this like clicking sound the whole time I was at the cemetery painting, and it creeped me out. I was like, what's happening? Something's behind me. 
I was really not prepared for how nerve-wracking the experience was going to be drawing on site in that cemetery. Usually when I'm drawing on site, I'm with a bunch of family members or I'm in a very public place where there's tons of people milling about. But the Whitstow Cemetery, it's so out in the middle of nowhere. There's nobody for miles. And that made me really nervous. I was thinking to myself the whole time that I was painting, wow, if something happened to me, I don't know that anybody would find out until it was too late. And so there was already that pressure on me as I was working, but it was unpleasant conditions. There were so many flies, which really bothers me because I hate bugs. It made me think that despite how kitschy and tacky the grave decorations were at the Woodstow Cemetery, that in some ways it functioned very much the way I think about a great work of art. That every time I revisit one artwork, I discover something different. I also found myself paying a lot of attention to the tiny details. And I felt that I earned it because I did spend a lot of time really blocking in the larger shadow shapes to really establish that foundation to get the lighting really concrete. And I have to say it was really satisfying <laughs> because at this point, I really had this pretty good sense of control over the sumi brush and getting the sumi brush to make those very, very thin marks, it honestly felt pretty easy at this point. And so I think I ended up doing way more of those tiny detailed strokes than I typically do, but it felt like it made sense because that was a grave that just had so many little bits and pieces, stray pieces of grass, little pebbles, and so I thought it was actually a good match for the scene. <laughs> 